A bitter truth is always better than a sweet lie. You know what? The truth hurts, but you know what? It also heals. And right here in the house of David, we love dealing with the truth. We love dealing with the elephant in the room. We talk about the touchy subjects. Now, think of someone who's immature. When you talk to them about everything else, they laugh and they joking. But automatically, when you start talking to them about something serious, the leaky faucet just starts having a spill. OK, and that's irritating. OK, if you can laugh and you can joke, then you know what? You should also be able to be serious and deal with reality. Now, I don't promote no racism in this house, but do I ignore the past? No. Think of your daughter. She gets married. OK, a guy cheats on her and destroys her family. OK, now she's done with them. Do you want her to ignore what happened? No, you want her to realize that she was screwed. OK, you have to deal with reality. OK, and we are in sync with reality. And we love all races of people, but we will talk about the issues that are in the races. I love Islam and I love when children talk about the truth. I have a clip from a YouTube channel that I love watching. And the only reason why I love watching it is because this is the way I want my children to be raised i want my children to be raised muslim wherever they are wherever they are i always pray that they will be like these children that you are about to hear i'm gonna play this clip real quick quick, quick allah quick, says quick, in the quran quick, quick. يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. نعم. All you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared, and die, not accept in a state of Islam. True. We should thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for giving us the greatest gift, the gift of Islam. Being among the greatest of all his nations. Being among the followers of his greatest prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now. Being upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest way of life. Many of us live in places where we feel like we are the minority. Or the odd ones out. We may even feel strange. However, that doesn't have anything wrong. The prophet, peace be upon him, says, no. There will be a time when believers will be among the strangers. Mm. He said, no. Bada al Islam gariban. Mm. Islam began as something that was very strange. True. And it will return to being strange. Fatuba lil gurabai. So blessed are the believers. Allah Akbar. Indeed. This religion started as something that was very strange. True. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his Sahabas were the minority in comparison to the idol worshippers of that time. True. We are in an ummah of values. And we carry these values wherever we are. Do not ever feel like you need to hide yourself because the fact you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest thing about you. No. Allah. Each one of us is an ambassador of Islam. What da'awa can you do if you are not strong enough to live in Islam. How can you call others to Islam when you are not confident enough to live in Islam? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is speaking about the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. He says, no. You Muslims have been brought forward as an example to mankind. Ta'muruna bil ma'arufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. Call towards good and forbid evil. Wa tu'minuna billah and believe in Allah. Now here we are now. Muslims fear to be recognized and seen as Muslims. True. That's what we are living in now. Yet this is what our ancestors fought for. Yeah. They fought for that. Kevin a lot. But now you see. What are we going in? Islam is a very important thing, a very important religion. Mm. We should be proud of it. Do not modernize Islam, but Islamize modernity. True. Islam is a complete constitution. Thus, Islam keeps us away from confusion. Yeah. Because Islam is logical and rational. Allah is one. Allah is one. Allah has no son. Allah is not associated with Trinity. There is no mediation between Allah and man. Mm. There is no class of clergy, no celibacy in Islam. The essence of Islam is the very essence of humanity. True. I wonder how Muslims refuse to take their children to Muslim-based schools. They say, Amasomelo mm Islam gasera. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you start to wonder what reward is in someone speaking English? Yeah, that's something to question myself about. Allah Akbar. Mm. Yet every year you spend money on birthdays. Allah Akbar. Katuina ga Muslim schools. Gano menage muagala. The Muslim schools. Yeah. It's now the core source of Muslim moral decay. What is in these schools is really terrifying. Indecent dress code. True. Homosexuality. Indeed. Teacher-student relationship. Yeah. But who cares? No one does. No one. Because schools are now money makers. Not all of them, but most of them. Yeah. Let's be proud of our religion. It's our identity and dignity. True. Let's not lose ourselves as the Muslims. The death of Sheikh Ismail in Qatar should serve as a wake up call for all of us. Definitely. The way people posted his videos was known for preaching, spreading the word of Allah. True. But now also you, when mm. you die, what kind of photos will they post? La ilaha illallah. Your videos when you are half naked. Your photos when you are half naked. Subhanallah. Allah. And then they write on them, mm. rest in peace. Yee. What kind of peace do you expect in the grave? Today, my question for you is, no. who will survive this reality? Mm. Who will live forever? No. One of the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Abdullah son of Masir. Kuntum an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, 
I was with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallam. Na. A man came to him. Hmm. Fa sallama ala nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the man said to him, "The Prophet." The Prophet now listen to those kids. Now when you listen to them, and when you listen to grown-ups in Christianity, there's a difference. These little kids in Africa have a better conversation than any person I ever talked to in the church. It's a blessing when you can turn on YouTube and get blessed by children talking to you about the things that you need to work on. Because the Christians, man, let me tell you something, man. They can't help you with nothing. If you hurt, they can't heal you. If you need a miracle, they can't help you. If you need an answer to prayer, they cannot help you. Now, this is pushing me to my topic. And my topic today is, 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 is why do black people, some black people, hate Islam? That's the question right there. Notice. I said some black people because Africans love Islam. I don't know what's wrong with the American black, okay? But Africa loves Islam. Now get this, 41.5% of Africa's population identified as Muslim. This is a slight decrease from 47% in 1870, but Africa still has the highest percentage of Muslims of any continent and nearly one third of the world's population of Muslims live there. Now, the United States is different. The United States estimate range from 0.9 percent to 1.1 percent Muslim total population. Now, that is a vast difference. There's something going on. Like that song. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you. Da, 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 da. What's going on, my brother? God blessed us and gave us Malcolm X. Peace be upon him, who gave us a great example of a man. He followed after the best example of all men, and that is. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we still did not wake up. We are still caught in these Christian churches. All this superstition, all this falsehood. We still want to be oppressed. We still trust in our friendly neighbor, Esau, who has done all nations on the planet Wrong. Now, I just got to keep it real. They enslaved us. They murdered us. They even forced Christianity upon us and our Native American Indians. Do you really think their revelation about Jesus Christ is correct? No, it's not. It's not. And the Arabians have the truth about Jesus. It's not a race thing. It's a true thing. But if we just look at the big picture, we see that America has this great white hope image. That's why they stole Jesus, painted him white. Do you really think they're going to convert? Not all of them. Some of them are. And I'm grateful for that. The white race has been the dog that has bit us all. Now, we can deal with reality, okay, or you can just log off. But I'm going to tell the truth and I'm going to shame the devil. OK, now the white man has did the black man wrong, according to history, for them to be the ones with the Bible in Christianity, with the laws from your boy Paul on treating the slaves. The Bible tells us how you are supposed to treat your slaves in the New Testament. Did the nation of Esau Follow that example. And for those who are unlearned, the nation of Esau is the white race. Did they follow that example? No. Okay. But we still forgave them. Okay. And given them chance after chance after chance. And I'm not saying that's wrong. But my, my question is, 
brothers, for y'all to be sitting up there running your mouth and to be saying, well, I don't like the Arabians because they racist. Well, how come most of y'all that are black men have a white girl? Okay, your boss is white. You respect, you rever him. You've given him a chance. What's up with giving your other brothers a chance? Okay, now I know about the sub-Saharan slave trade, and I know history on how some of us have been slaves of the Arabians. But guess what? Most of us in America have been slaves to the white man. Now, this is all over. The black man's arch enemy has been the white man for quite some time. But yet we've forgiven them and forgiven them. And some of us are even married to them. But for some reason, you got this huge issue with your Arabian brothers. Now, I'm going to tell the truth and I'm going to shame the devil. Okay, the number one complaint is that the Arabians are racist. Is that true? Yeah, I know it's true from experience. Okay, now, prior to me coming to Islam, when I found Islam, in the Bible and converted with no pressure from no man. When I was trying to get a hold of Mas, a lot of them did not call me back. So I have experienced racism amongst the Arabian brothers, but not all of them are like that. And to be honest, we all deal with racism. And most of the support I have on these YouTube channels is the Arabians. I also have support from the white man, okay? And I rarely, I'm talking about in the twos and fews, have any support from the black man, okay? Now, the white man has done the black man wrong, that's true. The Arabians have done the black man wrong, that's true. The Mexicans have done the black man wrong, that's true. But guess who else has done the black man wrong? The black man. So just because we've had a sub-Saharan slave trade when we were slaves to the Arabians, how come we can't forgive them? Because we were slaves to the white man right here in the America. You and me and our ancestors and ancestors and ancestors were slaves to the white race. But we've given them chance. That's what I call hypocrisy. And that's why we're going to deal with the real issue. Why do some people that are black hate Islam? Now, I'm going to prove to you in the scripture that the northern kingdom had the southern kingdom as slaves. You see, the white race had us as slaves. The Arabians had us as slaves, but guess who else had us as slaves? We have had one another as slaves. This is going to be 2 Chronicles 28 and 8. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren 200,000 women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. Now that's in Kings as well. The black man has had the black man captive. Okay. For quite some time. Okay. And right now in the neighborhood, what we call the hoods, we still have one another captive via drugs, guns, all the above. Okay. We have failed to treat one another right. And I'm still dealing with the question, what's wrong with the black man? Why do some black people hate Islam? Now, let's let's get to the meat of the matter. Now, Christianity, there's no big deal. There's no real commandments. There's nothing but grace and forgiveness. You and I know it. Okay, you can do what you want and ask God to forgive you in the name of Jesus and you all good. 
Okay? Now, Islam is a little different. Islam is a religion that is established on good works and a lot of discipline. And I think that's what it is. It's the discipline that people run away from Islam. That's what makes them hide. That's what makes them make excuse after excuse. They don't want to deal with the discipline that's in Islam. Our black women, God bless the black women that were in the nation of Islam and are still in the nation of Islam today because I take my hat off to you because right now most of our black women are are in the Christian church and you have held on and you have fought the real fight or the true good fight of faith by staying in a religion that requires discipline and good works. So all praises to the most high for that. But the black women that are in the churches and that are still in the streets, they don't want to deal with no discipline. They don't want to deal with purification. They don't want to deal with washing up time after time after time. Just like most of all women. Okay. Islam is going to regulate your dress code. Islam is going to regulate your nails. All those things that are dear to your heart. Islam is going to regulate that thing. And that's the reason why a lot of our people... Do not want to deal with Islam because it is a religion of discipline. Same with our black men. Same with all men. They make excuse after excuse because they don't want to deal with discipline. Going on. Now, let's do a recap. We've already established that the white race has done us wrong and we forgave them. Why can't we give that same mercy to our brothers, okay, and to our brothers that are Arabs? I encourage you to follow the messenger. Peace be upon him. You know that he was a mercy to all of mankind, okay? So we can't be fake. We can't be hypocrites. We know for a fact that the prophet Mohammed was a mercy to all of humanity. So we can't be acting funny. We can't be acting shaky. Okay. I, and I have had experiences when I've been trying to reach out to mosque after mosque, leaving voicemail after voicemail, email after email. And you know what? They haven't yet responded. But you know what? I'm going to have some mercy on my brothers I love my brothers. I love the Arabians. God used that nation to save the whole of humanity. So just like I'm having mercy on the white race and having forgiveness for them, I'm going to practice that same mercy and forgiveness for my Arabian brothers. Okay. And brothers like Ushereth, Jonathan, um, and many others that are on my YouTube that have actually taken the time to comment and to say something positive, even though some may not fully agree with everything that I'm bringing out. I appreciate that. And I encourage the black man to first start loving yourself and start embracing the truth of Islam. Okay, and that's loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and for those who might not like that we are reaching out to the black race on this channel, we know that the Prophet Muhammad gave us the Quran, and the Quran talks about God sending messengers to each community for each person to be able to understand in their own language the truth. Okay. now, Paul, he said he was zealous for Israel. And if Paul could be zealous for his people, then I can be zealous for mine. The truth of the matter is the people do not like Islam is because it's a religion that requires discipline. And I want to tell you, though, 
Islam is the religion that talks about hell more than any other religion. In the Quran, it talks about the blazing fire. It talks about the fire. It talks about chastisement more than any other religion. So I encourage you to take that serious. Okay. Paul only talked about heaven. There is not one mention of hell by Paul. Jesus talked about hell more than anybody in the entire Bible. Okay. That's because we believe that he is Muslim. Peace be upon him. So, yeah, we just tackled it. We made it simple and plain. There's no excuse for the black man. He gave us Malcolm X. Malcolm X showed us that the church is false. He showed us that there is a hatred that we have all had for the white race. But he dealt with that. He ended up loving his same white brothers. Okay, that right there is the roadmap. When I seen how much hatred he had for the nation of Edom and how he flipped that whole thing around. Actually, when he seen how fake his own people was towards them. And then he realized that there's good people and there's bad people. And that's the truth. I teach my children that all the time. I teach my family that, you know, there's always going to be someone, no matter what color they are, that's going to be a hater. And don't shoot yourself in the foot by being evil towards people who haven't done anything to you. Because most of the time, the people that are doing you evil is right in your own family. All right. So another thing I wanted to talk about. So here we have brothers in these Israelite camps, these Israelite cults, and they have men that they look up to, such as Nathaniel. OK, these men are false leaders. Not one of these men have been given a chart of the 12 tribes from God Almighty. God is not speaking to them by revelation or anything. They are just like the Christian church, powerless, running a huge Ponzi scam. All they have is empty promises in that Bible. And the revelation is not complete in that Bible because the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the last and final messenger with the truth and the guidance in all things. And that's dealing with hygiene. That's dealing with everyday, day-to-day life. All the customs of the nation of Israel were lost in the prophet Muhammad restored to us that guidance islam is real committing adultery in christianity is nothing if you look at the anonymous gospel writer john he literally paints the narrative that jesus forgave a woman that was caught in the act of adultery the fake me out israelis of today they're not stoning nobody caught in the act of adultery the only religion right now On the planet that is still stoning if you've been caught in the act of adultery is the nation of Islam. Islam is the truth. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.